Robots. Helpful or threatening? Cute or scary? Whether we like it or not, these machines are becoming more commonplace and fundamental to the way we live our lives. Let's chat. Whoops, can you say that again? In this series, the FT will take a closer look at the roles that robots may play in our homes, in the workplace and the world around us. We'll show how far this technology is advancing and what the coming robot revolution means for humanity. Japan is one of the world's fastest aging societies, with a quarter of the population over the age of 65. But with a low birth rate and little immigration, there simply aren't enough people to look after them. Since the 1990s, the country has been looking into robotic solutions to help look after its elderly people. So this is Paro. Um, <laughs> it has motors and has sensors all over its body. You can see that um, Paro doesn't talk, but it moves and it purrs and responds to my touches. The fur is specially coated so that it keeps off the bacteria and it's designed to last more than 10 years. You can see that the sensors are installed even in the whiskers, so you can tell it doesn't like it when it touches whiskers. <laughs> the Japanese robot seal is designed to provide therapeutic care for elderly people, especially those with dementia. It went on sale a decade ago and was one of the first elderly care robots in the country. This is a ninth generation Paro, the latest version. Along with its sensor technology, it now comes with artificial intelligence and learning capabilities. In general, when elderly people with dementia have anxiety, depression, and some uh, problems, uh, they have medications, psychotropic medications, and that have a side effect, and the people want to reduce to use them. And the uh, power can reduce them. Uh, one result of the ran randomized control trial showed that using Paro can uh, reduce 30% uh, of usage of uh, psychotropic medications for anxiety. And also, the Paro's effect continued two hours longer than uh, medication. And in general, at the uh, dementia care unit, when elderly people with dementia, uh, they use about 800 US dollars to 1200 US dollars per month for psychotropic medication. So using Paro can reduce such kind of cost. Paro's creator, Takanori Shibata, at first found it difficult to convince people that an animal-like machine could have a healing effect. Now he's one of the biggest names in robotic therapeutic care for the elderly. I made Paro as like human's baby, baby's size. Paro is a robot, but the people feel uh, Paro is living animal or baby. So uh, they can create some kind of subjective like world or subjective sphere uh, during interaction with Paro. And at that time, they create some kind of story uh, evoking association with previously owned dog or cat or like uh, raising children, grandchildren. Tadako Kaburagi, who is 104 years old, first met Paro at a nursing home in Tokyo. She lost her husband when he was fighting in the Philippines during the Second World War and raised her three sons on her own as a farmer. Interacting with Paro makes her laugh. <laughs> but should a robot provide emotional support to the elderly? Critics have argued that care robots could risk deceiving more vulnerable people making them believe they have a social connection with an object rather than a human. Paro's creator thinks these fears are based on robot stereotypes. People had a negative image uh, towards a robot. Especially in Western culture, uh, robot, most people think robots are kind of very dangerous, even though they have such kind of negative image. But once they interact with Paro, uh, they quickly change their what they, idea or uh, their way to, to add Paro. Not all elderly people have taken to robots like Paro. Toshiro Inada, who is 97 years old, doesn't trust robots because he fears they could be used in the wrong way. Mr. Inada spends most of his days alone, waiting for his daughters to come back from work, but he doesn't think robots will relieve his solitude. 
好ましくないという、えー、わけはロボットはハードだなと思うとロボットを動かしているのは人間の意識です不要意にロボットを導入しますと悪い面が出てそしてそのために大変な事態になる心配がございます。Despite the concerns surrounding robots, more and more companies are creating machines that can either support the elderly physically or interact with them socially in the hope that they can tap into this potentially lucrative market. Outside of Japan, Toyota is best known for making automobiles. But the world's largest car group has been engaged in robotic research since 2000. If previous attempts were spent on packing the latest, flashiest technologies into machines, Toyota's more recent efforts are focused on delivering practical and affordable tools for elderly care. HSR start! Akihumi Tamaoki, general manager of Toyota's partner robot division, says the long term goal is to create robots that provide emotional as well as physical support. やはり人と人がコミュニケーションするというのは一番あのいい対応だとは思うんですけどもこれからやはりその労働力人口が減ってくるそういったことになってくるとなかなか十分なケアができないであればその部分を足らずまいをロボットがサポートするという形になると思います。ロボットの方がいいかと言われると僕は当然人の方が人間の方がいい対応ができると思うんですけども最近はあの逆に人間もですねその忙しさのためにあの十分な対応ができなくていろんな事件なんかも起きるくらいですからそういったことになるくらいならロボットがサポートに入ってロボットはきちっとやることはやりますのでそういった部分がサポートできる領域だと思いますね。In the short term, though, Toyota is producing robots which physically support older people. Its latest invention, now available at hospitals and universities in Japan for leasing, is a robot that glides around like R2D2 from Star Wars. The machine, called HSR or Human Support Robot, only has one arm that's dedicated to a single task picking things up. The technological challenge is still big. Even a simple task, such as picking up a bottle of water, isn't easy. At times, the HSR fails to grasp it firmly enough or deliver it properly to the user. Elderly people at the rehabilitation ward of Fujita Health University Hospital in Aichi Prefecture are using Toyota's robotic machines to help with their ailments. Yaiko Matsuki, a 64 year old patient, was paralyzed on the left side of her body after suffering a stroke a year ago. I can't get to the car fast, and I can't get to the car fast. 自然の風じゃなくて自分で何かやった時の風を感じるっていうことがこれで風ないんですけど感じるんです昔の風を。With both the human support robot and the robotic machines, cost has played a big part in the design and functionality. The HSR only has one arm, partly because it was less complex and less expensive than having two. 今の技術の進歩からするといろんな機能をいろんなセンサーをつけたりいろんなアクチュエーターをつけたりすればいろんなことができるようにはなりましたただそれを実用生活の中で使うにはその生活に見合ったコストに抑える必要がありますそれができないとやはり世の中に提供することができませんのでコストというのはやっぱり一番大事なファクターになってきます But even with robots which provide physical support, there are ethical issues. Some fear that these robots can inadvertently encourage dependence. Michio Okada, professor at Toyohashi University of Technology, has been looking into social robotics for more than two decades. His students create robots that are socially interactive. He says robots work better with humans when they're imperfect or weak because they prevent people from becoming too reliant on them and help the elderly remain independent for longer. So, this is the えー、と普通ロボットっていうと僕らに何かサービスを提供してくれるようなそういうロボットが多いんですけどもむしろそのえとなんか手をかけたくなってしまうようなそういう少し弱さのあるようなロボットを考えていること多いんですよね。えー、そうですねあの一方的にその高齢者の生活をその支える支援するっていうよりはむしろその
ほんのちょっと手間がかかるので周りのその世話を引き出してくれるわけですね、まあ、ゴミを拾ってあげるとかそういうことでその高齢者の方の参加する、まあ、余地を残しているっていうかそこにその参加しながら一緒になってこう生活を楽しむっていうような要素が生まれてくるんじゃないかなというふうに思うんですね。At this nursing home in western Tokyo, a dancing and singing humanoid called Paro is being used for group sessions with the elderly. This is what the future of the elderly pair may look like. Paro is being used to keep older people mentally stimulated and physically fit. In this way, the elderly can feel empowered without creating a sense of dependency on robots. Among the participants is 90 year old Chieko Hoshino, a former nurse who says Paro is a fun companion that she can chat with. そうですね、うん、やっぱしね年取るとね口がもうね上手言えないからだからこういうロボットとねおしゃべりしたいですよ。うん、ねしゃべればしゃべるほどねあのだ頭も少しはねこういうようにねいいかなと思ってね。Paro is being used in over 300 nursing homes like this one across Japan. It aims to help people with dementia and encourage exercise. Care workers say Paro has made it easier for them to convince reluctant dementia patients to participate in rehabilitation. こう上に泊まってる利用者さんたちって普段僕らに比べたら退屈な時間とかが結構多いと思うんですよ、ね、楽しみとかもないのでやっぱこういうロボットがいてこういうのが一つの楽しみになったりだとかですれば、はい、もうだいぶ上での過ごし方とかも,もうパルロに会いに行けるからじゃあ私はリハビリ頑張るだとか何て言うんですかね活動性もどんどん上がっていくし。But could robots like Paro one day replace care workers in nursing homes? Mr. Arashima thinks that there will always be a need for human attention when looking after the elderly, especially because patient needs vary from person to person. Meanwhile, Professor Okada thinks the elderly benefit most from robots when they actively engage and work collaboratively with machines. えー、方向でいろいろ技術開発が進んでるんですけども一方的にこうサービスを提供しようとするとそこにいるおばあちゃんというのは非常にこう受け身というか受動的な存在になってしまうとかあるいはまあ物として扱われるようなことも非常に多くなってきているので。The ethical and technological issues Japan faces in elderly care resonate globally. Using robots could provide an effective solution, but a delicate balance needs to be struck between providing mental and physical support and ensuring the elderly feel they are functioning members of society. And crucially, any robotic solution needs to be affordable for the mass market. Creating a robot which takes all these factors into consideration is a challenge. But one which could be transformative for elderly people and their families around the world. One big hurdle to reaching level 4 full autonomy is training computers to respond to every potential eventuality on the roads, including distracted human drivers. But computers can make mistakes too. In February, Google was forced to make changes to its algorithms after one of its cars drove into a bus in Mountain View. 